Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to our programming today. So this workshop is a uh, chapter recruitment and retention best practices. So we're going to talk about some strategies that you can use to recruit new members and uh, also some strategies for how to retain the members you've got. And then uh, we'll do something a little bit interactive. So with our agenda today, we'll go over recruitment best practices, then retention best practices, then we'll talk about how to design a recruitment campaign, and then we'll do an activity. So, somebody with their microphone on, we can hear all your background noise. Thank you. Okay, so first, let's talk about why people join an organization. So in a perfect world, you know, people would join an organization automatically because they fully understand what the purpose and the mission is and they're immediately on board with it. And everyone would join and sign up right away after just one big membership drive. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. So in the real world, there are a variety of reasons why someone might join an organization. So for Nesby, for example, the motivation can be scholarships, internships, jobs, specialty training, uh, building a resume, uh, social activities, making new friends, or developing a professional network. And as we know, our organization spans a wide range of ages, so people are at different stages in their life. So for a new freshman who's just starting college, you know, they need that support and encouragement to get through their classes. And a junior or senior is probably looking for mentorship and developing their soft skills to position themselves to get a job after graduation. Um, someone in their early career uh, might be looking for career counseling um, and an experienced professional might be looking to advance their career or, you know, get some executive coaching. So there are a variety of reasons why people join Nesby. So we need to keep all that in mind when figuring out how to recruit new members. And recruiting is a year round activity. You know, we may start our programming in the fall, but recruiting should be a year round activity. We should constantly be trying to encourage more people to um, come and take a look at what we do and become a part of it. So there are some things that uh, chapters have uh, done in the past to recruit new members. So we'll just go through some of these and uh, we can discuss them. So a big thing that a lot of chapters do is a kickoff meeting or a membership drive typically around this time of year, August or September. Um, a lot of times it'll be a more fun social event. Like, um, you know, a lot of chapters, they might do like a happy hour somewhere, you know, somewhere where there's food and music, you know, where you can just kick back and have conversation. And usually at these events, um, there's infrastructure set up to do on the spot registration. and you know, sign up as a member, collect dues right then and there for the chapter. Uh, so that's something that, you know, a lot of chapters have found effective. Um, another thing that chapters have done is have signature events. Now, what I mean by a signature event is something that happens on an annual basis, you know, that a chapter is kind of known for, you know, something that people can look forward to every year. So it could be a variety of types of events. Like a lot of times it may be a social event, like a holiday party. Um, so I can speak for my chapter, um, the Detroit Professionals chapter. Um, we host a holiday party every year. So it's one of the things that, you know, 
every new term, the board knows that they're going to be doing that and uh, something that the membership looks for look looks forward to. So that could be uh, one of your signature events that you can use to help recruit. You know, it could be you know something else like a golf outing that you do every year, or you know something social that you know everybody can look forward to. Yeah, you know, another avenue it could be some community outreach event. Um, like for example, um, uh, one of the chapters in Region Four, um, the Milwaukee chapter, they have a scholarship gala every year. So, yes, you know, this big fancy event that you know people in the area can look forward to, and uh, it could be used to to put the chapter on the map and you know. Let people in the area know who they are and you know provide an avenue for people to to see what they're all about. Another thing that uh, chapters have done is uh, a walk for education. So that's a national Nesby program that you know we've done over the years. So some chapters take it upon themselves to host their own walk for education. So that's another option. So next, uh, another avenue is uh, strategic partnerships. So these are partnerships with uh, other organizations in your area where um, you can mutually benefit each other and you know provide exposure to another segment of the population. So this could be a local chapter of another engineering organization in your area, like perhaps your local chapter of SWE or SHIP or AIAA or or one of the other you know, engineering organizations. Or it could be something in the some other professional area or uh, community engagement like the NAACP or something like that. And uh, with these strategic partnerships, um, you could either you know provide you know select membership benefits to members of the other organization, you know, kind of jointly doing that together, or you can collaborate on, you know, specific events. Um, like in another example to use from my local chapter. Um, so Nesby Detroit Professionals is a part of an organization called Compass, which is Coalition of Minority Professional Engineering Societies. So it's comprised of our Nesby chapter, um, the Detroit chapter of Sweet Professionals, and the Detroit chapter of Ship Professionals. So every year um, we collaborate on a professional development conference. So it's hosted by all three organizations. So that's the way that we, you know, provide that benefit to the members of all three of our organizations you know, collaborate with each other and uh, expose each other to our organizations. So that's a way that you can attract new members who might not have considered you before. And uh, another avenue is the uh, employee resource groups. So, you know, many of us work for pretty big companies that, you know, have employee resource groups for a variety of demographics. Um, Usually there's an African American group, uh, uh, some group, a group for women, a group for Latinx or Asians, you know. So um, your chapter can, you know, approach these companies that your members work for and see if you can partner with these employee resource groups. And so that's another avenue to gain exposure to people who work in these companies that. Um, may not know that your local Nesby chapter exists. So that's another avenue to gain more exposure with potential members. Then uh, finally, you could start a bring a friend campaign. So you could provide some kind of incentive for members to bring new people to meetings and get them signed up. Or, uh, you know, maybe you could have some kind of contest like whoever brings the most new people to the next meeting gets some kind of prize or something like that. And this can be really effective because, 
you know, it's a personal touch. It's you talking directly with someone that you know who, who um, theoretically trusts you. So peer pressure can sometimes be effective. So it may not work on everybody, but if you're someone that can be persuasive and convince people to come to things with you, you know, that's that can be an effective means to bring new members to your chapter. So any questions about any of these strategies? Or comments? I don't want to just talk the whole time. So if you have something you'd like to point out, you know, let's hear it. Hey, Jonathan, it's Mike Jackson, the uh, Region 5 uh, membership chair. Um, <clears throat> I'm coming back into the fold with Nesby uh, after a long hiatus after graduating. And um, considering our current environment with COVID, uh, do you have any insight on, you know, since we've been, you know, essentially teleworking for the past year and a half, do you have any insight? on these uh, one, two, three, four, five um, practices in terms of uh, virtual hybrid? Yeah, so, you know, for the most part, you know, we've all been doing things virtually for the last year and a half pretty much. So I'm not gonna say it's been easy to convert to, you know, doing these things virtual, but you know, it has been done. Um, so, speaking again, once again, from my local chapter, um, so we had a virtual membership drive. So, was, um, normally we would, you know, like go to a restaurant or something and, you know, we would all sit down and hang out. But uh, for our virtual drive, we kind of spread it over multiple nights where there was like a different activity each night. Um, so like, I believe, you know, one of the nights was like a game night. Um, one of the nights was like, um, like a virtual karaoke thing. So like, you know, you could do something like that where, you know, find some activity that can be done online and, you know, use that as a hook to get people to log on. Cause, you know, I know a lot of people have Zoom fatigue at this point, but, uh, until, you know, it's completely safe to get back in person, you know, chapters just have to be creative to, you know, find that hook that, you know, will convince people, you know, this is worth getting on the computer for another hour, you know, to check out. No, no, I, I uh, so I've, I've, I've uh, you know, heard about, I haven't participated in, but, you know, virtual game nights, and I've heard that those have been successful, but the uh, idea of a virtual karaoke sounds very interesting, because, uh, you know, maybe you could uh, hire a DJ that could MC, you know, uh, bring a little more flavor, uh, and, and and you know, put that on. That, that sounds like it might be uh, pretty interesting, and maybe even um, you could, uh, you know, uh, Put out some some recipes for cocktails to go along with it or something like that so okay very good thank you yeah yeah you actually just reminded me um yeah i see chapters do like a virtual cocktail night where they have somebody that like they have like a mixologist you know teach everybody how to make make different drinks so that's something that you could do um so i remember for our last holiday party, um, one of the things we did was a virtual escape room. Uh, I'm not very much familiar with escape rooms where um, you're locked in a room and you have to search for clues to, you know, find the way out. So there's some, you know, online versions of that. You know, some of them paid for, some of them free, where, you know, you go hunting for clues online to, you know, solve the puzzle. So that can be fun too. So any other questions or comments? All right, and moving on. So 
OK, so you've recruited new members, but now how do you keep them? So. There are some uh, best practices. That you know can help you retain your membership. So first is to strive for consistency. So what I mean by that is. Try to have consistent meeting times. Um, so if you could have like a certain week of the month, then you try to schedule all your meetings like say the third Thursday of the month, we'll have our general body meetings. You know, establishing that consistency can help with keeping people engaged because then they know um, that meetings are always going to happen at that time. So more likely to come. And, uh, and try to keep things predictable. Like most chapters, they have a general body meeting once a month. Um, so try to keep that that consistent schedule where every month or every two weeks or whatever your cadence is so that people you know get used to that and know when to expect things to happen and uh i know some chapters they try to have like a a cycle like a predictable cycle of types of events like you know they do like a serious technical event and then next they'll do like a social event so like try to keep things you know on that cycle back and forth so that you don't have too many of the same type of event in a row and then that leads into my next point content variety so yeah we're a technical organization but we're also well-rounded people we don't want to talk work all the time. So you want to have a balance of technical and non-technical events. And as chapter leaders, you know your members best. So you know, make sure you give the people what they want. You know what kinds of jobs your members have, or at least you should know. So you should be collecting that membership data to know your demographics. Um, so you know if you know you have a lot of more seasoned professionals or if you have you know younger early career professionals you know it's good to know if you have a lot of people with families or a lot of single people so that can help you decide what types of events would be most appealing to your membership and then uh you want to you know play up the membership benefits so you know there's a lot of benefits that Nesby provides. You know, some of the key ones are networking, personal and professional development. And then of course, you know, the Nesby love, you know, I consider Nesby like a second family and I know a lot of people feel the same. So, you know, really encouraging that, you know, family connection can help to keep people engaged and keep them coming back. Now, another thing you might want to consider is to offer committee opportunities. So, you know, some people might want to get more involved, but aren't necessarily ready to take the step to chapter leadership. So, forming a committee for some, you know, one off event or a special project can give people an opportunity to get that leadership experience without fully committing. And, uh, you know, it helps people to feel like, you know, they're contributing to the success of the chapter. And also, you know, it could help you to kind of prod people into stepping up for chapter leadership, you know, if they have a good experience with the committee assignment. So that's an opportunity to help with the, the sustainment of your chapter board as well. And then Finally, you know, personal connections. So, you know, most people stick around with the group because, you know, they feel connected to the individuals. So, you know, you want to make sure all your members feel welcome and you want to highlight your members' accomplishments. So, you know, celebrate the promotions, you know, celebrate the birthdays, you know, celebrate the, the new babies, you know, anything good that's happening in your members' lives, you know, you should talk about it and, you know, highlight those achievements. So, any questions about 
uh, retention or anything you want to add about these strategies? Does anybody have any success stories about, you know, convincing someone to stick with Nesby that might have been, you know, thinking about leaving? I think it, for me, and hey, everybody, this is Catherine from Atlanta Professionals. Um, the thing that I have problems with is uh, we know that engineers are, are more often than not introverts and reaching out to them and getting that direct connection is what really brings them to these events and getting them out of that comfort shell. But for me, I get overwhelmed because um, like damn near all of them are introverts. So there's so many text messages, there's so many, hey, are you comings, you know, that you have to do. And it's almost like you have to strong arm them every single time for every single event. And it, it gets overwhelming easily. Do you have any any tips or any ways to kind of manage that kind of burnout? Yeah, so I think what we're going to get into next might help with to address your question a bit. Um, but yeah, I agree that, you know, many of us in the STEM field, we are introverts, so, you know, it's not as easy for us to, you know, verbally commit someone that they should do something. So I guess my best advice would be to um, I mean, when you joined Nesby, there was something that attracted you. So try to find out what that thing is for the other person and, you know, see if you could play to that strength. So if somebody's um, more interested in like the, the technical events, you know, if they're not as concerned about the social aspect, then, you know, focus more on inviting them to like the general body meetings where the technical content is covered or vice versa if you know the person is looking to just you know get out and do something fun you know invite them to the social events so try to find that thing where they see the value proposition and focus your efforts on that area Any other questions? Uh, yes, hello. This is uh, Joaquin from uh, North Alabama Professionals. Um, I kind of want to go off that same uh, line um, with kind of encouraging uh, um, those to kind of uh, step in the Nesby love or the world of Nesby. Um, more on the kind of professional side um so i guess my question is are uh, it um are we kind of uh are you as kind of like a, the professional board um kind of helping out uh with this um part in coming up with kind of like a list of speakers that we can kind of uh, tap into or network with to kind of come to our uh, different um, chapter level meetings or um, th uh, things of that nature. Because uh, I kind of find that kind of a little bit difficult sometimes to kind of reach out to uh, different professionals in the area to kind of uh, show that value proposition to show that that worth that Nesby brings to the table. Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, as a regional as the regional professional executive board. Um, so it's their job to, you know, assist chapters with whatever they're struggling with. So, you know, if you want someone from the regional or national board to come to one of your meetings, you know, reach out to your um, your chair or your counterpart on the regional board and ask them. So I'm sure they're more than willing to pop into your meeting, especially, you know, if meetings are still virtual for now, it's really easy for us to do that. 
Right. Yeah, and you know, we also have our special interest groups. You know, they're a great resource to you know provide speakers and content because you know they have that expertise in you know a variety of STEM disciplines. So you know, if you if you're in an area with a lot of healthcare workers, like you can reach out to, reach out to the healthcare innovation SIG and you know, I'm sure they'd love to put on a program with you or aerospace or transportation. You know, we've got a variety of SIGs that cover a variety of topics. So they're a great resource and they want to work with the chapters. So, you know, work with, you know, reach out to your regional board and, you know, they can get you hooked up with SIGs as well. And, and Jonathan, can, can I piggyback just a little bit? This is uh, Nick. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, I'm Nick Tarver, Professionals Membership Chair, and I, I echo everything Jonathan said uh, about those different resources that you can use. Uh, I'm actually looking to put together a speaker speakers bureau just from NSBE members. I haven't rolled it out yet, but it, it should be available to uh, the whole organization. So I'm going to ask for people who have expertise in various topics to offer themselves as a, a, a potential speaker to be uh, used for chapters and conferences. Uh, also for the SIGs, I'm gonna give you a direct example. Uh, we have a chapter in Maryland at NASA, and they said, you know, we have members who are interested in Six Sigma, um, but nobody really has the expertise to kind of explain it. I was a part of the process improvement SIG, and we have a lot of experts in that in that field. Uh, so I reached out and said, hey, we got this chapter. They're looking uh, for somebody to come speak on this topic. Can we set up a time to go go chat with them? So we locked it in, got an expert to come in and talk to them. Uh, it was very the chapter was very receptive. They appreciated the content, um, but that's definitely a resource that you have available to you to use. It's the six, and hopefully you got more information about them in the program zone uh, meeting. But like I said, I, I echo everything Jonathan Jonathan said, and also collaborate with other chapters if possible. Um, in Region Two, we had. Um, a certification workshop and we uh, had speakers to come in and talk about different types of search that you can get agile pmp and there are a couple of different others uh, and it was a multi-chapter effort uh, so and that went over pretty well too so i'm hoping to see more of that as you go throughout the year especially in this virtual environment where you, there's more opportunities to collaborate and get more engagement because there, there's there's force in numbers right hey i wanted to um just volunteer right out the jump um i heard speakers bureau and my my soul perked up so this is fatima uh, from detroit professionals uh, so again take my name down i would love the opportunity um, to speak and share on a numerous topics we can you know chat about that at a later time but yeah awesome absolutely i'll, I'll be i'll be in touch <laughs> I see a hand up. Um, I don't know your name. Your screen name is TMB112. Hey, yes, it's Tiffany um, from Birmingham Professionals Chapter. And I know that uh, Catherine um, might be, I guess, a, a little familiar because she and I have kind of discussed this in Region 3 meetings um, just kind of over the course of the past couple of weeks. But um, I guess my question is going to be more so on, it's very easy to hear the success stories. However, what I'm not particularly hearing is any ideas on how we should handle those difficulties. Um, and I guess I'm new to the leadership role. So I am on this line of, I don't know how to get new members because I don't, I can't strong arm my old members because I don't even know who they are. So it's not that there's a point of contact where, like in Catherine's case, as she mentioned, that they may be receiving too much contact. It's that we're providing the contact, but we're not getting their responses. So how do we effectively plan for programming, for speakers, for social engagement, for technical um, seminars and training, when we are asking can specifically speak for myself, when I I don't know what they want. 
Yeah, that's a good question. So, and I think that's something that, you know, as a whole organization, we struggle with, you know, getting good, actionable feedback from our members on uh, what would best motivate them. So, I mean, I know a lot of chapters, they, you know, send out surveys at the end of the year to help prepare for next year. So, I mean, I know that's getting survey responses is also a struggle, but, you know, that's one method where you can kind of gauge interest in what people want to see to help you plan for the future. Um, and also, you know, Nesby has lots of uh, membership data compiled. So, you know, we actually have a membership dashboard now where you can uh, see the demographics for your region. Um, so you can kind of see where people are and, you know, kind of get a sense of, you know, what kind of people you have in your region, you know, where they work and all that. So that can help you to plan programming that might appeal better to them. But yeah, that's a good point, Chantel. You know, social media can help you see what people are interested in as well. Jonathan, if I could just tag on just a, a little bit more. It mm -hmm. sounds like I, I heard two questions in, in the, uh, I guess in the questions. It sounds like you were trying to figure out how to get more members uh, involved. And uh, we, we had a, a similar situation with the Charlotte Professional Chapter where they were just down to one member and it, it was the president. And uh, she was trying to figure out how to get that, that chapter revived. Um, so we had to give her some tools to, you know, go out and find different pockets of people, uh, employee resource groups from, I think they're in the energy region. So her company had a black employee resource group. So she tagged them, got them interested in, in coming to membership meetings and uh, partnering with other organizations like Black MBA. When I was in DC chapter, I was membership chair. Uh, we partnered with other black organizations and that, that created a buzz and they got more people to come out and be active. Um, and like Jonathan said, use, use surveys. Sometimes people don't always respond to the surveys, but if you offer an incentive, like a $20 gift card or something, they might, you know, take a peek at it. Um, more social activities. Uh, DC chapter was very social and that kind of put our name out there uh, in, in the region, but we also had some good technical content and we had good speakers to come in uh, to generate more buzz. So that there's a, a lot of different techniques and tools that you can employ, um, but reach out to your, your regional boards, uh, ask for advice from your other chapter leaders who have done something similar and they've been successful at it. Um, share advice, uh, reach out to me. Uh, I'm an open book. <laughs> I'm a social person, so I don't have a problem sharing some of my tips. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's a great question. And if you miss my membership meeting, you missed a lot of information. <laughs> Well, and that's kind of the thing. I'm the only one here from my chapter today. So I'm kind of playing like every single role. So let me just go ahead and put it out there. Whatever you sent that Charlotte chapter, just forward it to me. Um, <laughs> like I'll send you an email following this. Um, and I mean, I guess that's the thing is that like, I, I can't get any information or I'm having a difficulty getting information from the previous exec board because I think that they are also experiencing experiencing Nesby burnout to where they've done so much work previously. Now, I, I don't even know how much money we have in our bank account as the president of the chapter. Like, I, I can't offer a gift card because I, I don't know what's in there, you know? So um so that's where a lot of the difficulties are, are kind of coming from. But yeah, I, I, I know I have your email address because I got it from the reminder here. So I'll um, respond and Get and try to get those templates because I really need them. Thanks so much. All right, and uh, just to add one more point, as far as like finding your old members who have scattered, you know, one thing that one of chapter presidents in my region said that uh, she did was uh, they went on LinkedIn and searched for anybody that had anything regarding Nesby in their profile and they targeted those people like they said like they filtered for their city 
look for anything that would be related on um, the profiles and then you know targeted those people to send out communications. So that could be an option as well. And then I saw a hand up, uh, Charles. Yeah, I was just going to mention, um, I work uh, closely with Nick Tauber and um, I'm working also with Dr. Gray. Um, I'm the um, process improvement SIG um, tech director. And we actually do a lot of workshops, both um, as Nick mentioned, the um, yellow belt, green belt. Um, and we also do soft scale workshops um, as well. Um, we are looking now to um, put on a, a workshops for the FRC. Uh, we're also basically forecasting for our national convention. So uh, for those groups that um, need assistance or support in terms of workshops, um, if you want to reach out to me at um, processtech at nesby.org, uh, I'll be happy to support you guys. All right, any other questions? All right. The next one we'll move on to what a recruitment campaign looks like. So just a high level overview. Uh, you want to know who your audience is. Develop your message. Be creative. Diversify your communication channels figure out what's working and then make sure you maintain contact with the uh, potential members. So this is something uh, you may have seen before. Uh, so this is a diagram of a customer journey. So when you're trying to sell a product or a service to someone, there's a set of stages that the customer goes through. So first is that there's the awareness phase where you make them aware that you exist. And then from there, you move to consideration where you try to compel them to um, purchase your product or service. And then next is the actual purchase. And then comes retention. And then following retention is advocacy where they start doing the advertising for you. They tell their friends and family, you know, what a great product or service you have. So these are the stages that you got to keep in mind when you're figuring out how to set up your recruitment strategy. So when, we're, when you're planning a recruitment event, just uh, some things to keep in mind. So your content, you need to make sure you focus on the programs and the benefits that Nesby has to offer. Uh, you want to consider what activities you're going to do for the event. And we kind of touched on that a little earlier, you know, with a lot of stuff still having to be virtual, you know, what can you do that can be done online? Uh, figure out your intention behind the activities. So what specific goals are you trying to accomplish? Uh, make sure you leverage data, which we talked about as well, you know, figure out the best way to collect that data and um, make sure you analyze and understand your demographics because that will help you better target your efforts to the people you want to recruit. And you have to consider how you're going to market and communicate you know, your event to people that you want to come. And when it comes to execution, plan early. You know, the earlier you start, the better your plan will be. Leverage uh, your Nesby regional and national leadership. You know, we're here to help you. You know, um, like we said, there are a lot of resources that, you know, can help you be more successful. And finally, you want to give re people a reason to come back. So you can put on the greatest event in the world. Everybody loved it. But if they don't feel that connection to your organization, you know, they may not come back. So I like it to like you saw you went and saw a movie and you enjoyed it while you watched it. I mean, you didn't hate it, but it didn't compel you enough to want to see a sequel. So you want you know, people to leave your recruitment event, you know, wondering, okay, when's the sequel? So figure out how to, you know, 
get that hook and you know make people want to return and then finally follow up so you want to make sure you contact the people who came to your event as soon as possible afterwards and uh you know thank them for coming you know give them contact information for the chapter you know maybe leave them like a list of upcoming events you know make sure that you know they felt like they were important and that you didn't forget about them right after the event and apply any lessons learned um, from this event to whatever you do next so any questions about that Hey, um, what what platform is this? Uh, the again, considering COVID, uh, these recruitment events are a typically Zoom, or is there something Nesby, a platform Nesby offers that uh, could capture um, bringing in folks that are non Nesby to 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 uh, be either speakers or some sort of entertainment or whatever that may be associated with the event. So I don't know if you were on last night. Um, so we unfortunately don't have it yet, but uh, we're considering using a new tool called Bevy, where all the chapters can uh, set up their events and it would be a standardized format that everybody in the organization can use. So. That's something that may be coming in the future, but unfortunately, right now we don't have a standardized platform for everyone to use. Um, most chapters have used Zoom or Google Hangouts. So really, it just comes down to what's available to you that you know fits within your budget. So either a free tool or you know there are things you can pay for if your chapter has a budget for it. Yeah, Roger that. Thank you. And I will say Zoom, it's a pretty useful tool. And there's some creative things you can do with or any uh, communication tool you want to use, Team Zoom. Um, you can have game nights, virtual game nights, uh, DJ party. Actually, I'm the resident DJ for our Nesby uh, leaders. Um, game nights against other chapters uh, with breakout rooms. And we had another room that was for karaoke. So there's a lot of creative ways that you can still continue that engagement in a safe way, uh, virtually. It's just something to think about. Yes, sir. Any other questions? All right, so we're coming up short on time, so I don't know if we can really do the activity um, we can at least do a, a few minutes of it. So let me switch to my screen. Okay, everybody see uh, my desktop? No. Yep. All right, so basically what I wanted to do was go through the different stages of customer journey and just kind of brainstorm, you know, things that we can do to, you know, facilitate each step of the journey if we were trying to recruit people. So, Let's see if we can at least get a couple. So in the awareness phase, so come off mute or put in the chat or whatever. Uh, what are some things we can do to raise awareness? I think this is the uh, social media aspect. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, social media posts. Okay. Anything else? Um, well, I would also say uh, getting 
uh, your your uh, ERGs, employee resource groups involved, or sharing over there professionally. Okay. So let's move on to interest since we're short on time. How can we increase interest? Like you said, incentives. And also okay. say uh, uh, communication of benefits. I think we do a great job with branding, but I think we can do a lot better. Um, uh, I know we're talking about capturing uh, for graduate students, um, but just I think branding you could always improve on. OK. Yeah, what about consideration? What, what do you mean by consideration? So if we go back to presentation. I like a, a follow up post, like a thank you post on social media. So like, hey, thanks to everybody for coming out. You made this a great, you know, like a great success. Uh, I second that. So which category we're we putting that under? Consideration. Okay. Would this be also the um, um, would this be where uh, you know acknowledging different members may fall? You know they're accomplishments or uh, you know if they could be yeah. something like that okay you got anything for the purchase stage when someone decides okay I'm gonna join Easy access to multiple streams or um, make it easy to access um, using multiple uh, streams of um, payment like uh, Venmo, Cash App, things like that, other than checks and other things, checks and cash. Okay. I would also say along the lines of the incentives, like um, either uh, a certain trial time before they can pay, and they can um, pay like for the rest of the year at a prorated rate or something like that. Okay. All right, anything for retention or advocacy? Uh, we really do need to wrap up. This is where the uh, professional development comes in. Also, possibly renewal discounts. Mm. Um, also, also say like plugging them into a committee. Yeah. Maybe um, also good to have, uh, you know, member 
I mean, if it's possible, get member testimony as to, you know, how their membership uh, helped them professionally, personally, you know, some, some sort of testimony that, that ties into why you would continue your, your uh, membership. Great, these are all good. So, hope uh, giving you some things to think about for how to strategize best for your chapter. So, switch back to PowerPoint real quick. So I want to thank you all for coming. Yeah, you know, this was a really good discussion. I think we came up with some good ideas to think about. So um, my name is Jonathan Tyler. I'm the Region 4 Professionals Chair. That's the email where you can reach me. And then last but not least, don't forget to fill out, fill out the survey. So it's the same link that's been shared uh, in the other sessions. So. You know, really appreciate hearing what you think to help us improve for next time. So thank everybody and I'll see you back in uh, the main session. Thanks, Jonathan.